Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Very excited today, Saturday morning. School of box pop through my door. So I've come straight upstairs to open this up and see what's inside. Um, so this is the um, School of box monthly subscription. It um, costs £15 a month, including post and pack into the UK. Now what I need to remember to do is not show my address. It's okay, it's on the bottom this time, so no worries. So excited opening my school box, and you, you get no clues. They give out no clues about to expect. It's a surprise every time. Could be pens, could be paints, could be pencils. But basically, it's going to be some kind of art supplies. Ooh. Fairly weighty package this time. A bit of a clue about the kind of colours that are going to be inside. This is. Kind of similar colours, mm, kind of same colour family as um, last month actually, but obviously a very different medium. How beautiful. You always get um, a piece by the featured artist who is Jess Kirkman this month. Jess Kirkman is an award winning artist and designer who specialises in alcohol inks, resin, and in caustic mediums. Mmm, <sighs> how intriguing. I'm not going to peek in the school of zine yet because that will give me too much of a clue about what what else might be in here. <gasps> Yupo paper. Hmm, so Jess Kirkman specialises in alcohol inks and this is Yupo paper. I'm getting a little clue. <laughs> Can you tell? I get a bit, a little bit overexcited opening my school box. Right, let's pop this out of the way a minute and have a look at the really exciting part. I love unwrapping this. It really is like a little birthday present to yourself every month. <laughs> Pretty sticky. You always get a sticker. So I've got a couple of, um, of my art journals are now covered with these. And time for me to start a new one, probably. Oh, different shape. Ah, now this is, has always been a long strip before. So let's see what it says. I'm not looking, I'm stopping myself looking for a minute. I'm so excited. In a galaxy far, far away, this month's box is going intergalactic. Pour, dip and tip the ink to experiment with the abstract fluid forms it creates. Use the tools to drip, drop and blow around the ink to see what unique marks you can make. Oh, how exciting! Try swirling your paintbrush in while wet and then back again. And then back in again once dry with the extender to see how it expands your galactic arrangements. Ooh. So the scroll of challenge is always a word or phrase to, to kind of get a creative spark going. This time it's nebula. A glowing form of clouds made up of interstellar gas and dust. And I did actually join in with the challenge online last month for the first time. So you you create something inspired by the word or phrase they give you and using only the products in the box. And then you can use hashtag scrawler challenge to share it with the community. Right, so I'm not going to look at that just yet. Let's have a look. Oh, this is different and you always get a sweetie. Oh, I love these drumsticks. I'm not supposed to be eating them at the moment. Right, so looks like we've got two colours of alcohol ink. Now I've tried alcohol inks before. I have quite a little collection of them. I've had for a long time. But I've not tried this brand, which is Marabou. Um, so there's a magenta one and Caribbean. Magenta and Caribbean. And then Diamond Sparkle. Ooh. Oh. Oh, it's a sparkly. Oh, <laughs> we'll read about <clears throat> on the other side here. There'll be details about the products in the box. So, I'll link. this is the extender, and then we've got quite a nice nifty little brush, a straw for blowing around with, <laughs> and a dropper. I have got some straws and droppers anyway, but you know. It's nice to think that if you had nothing else, you could just, you've got everything you need here to create a work of art and join in with a challenge. Right, let's see what the details say. So, Marabou Alcohol Inks times three. 
So yeah, we've got the Sparkle, the Magenta and the Caribbean. These alcohol-based permanent, permanent inks take fluid painting to a whole new level, offering unlimited design possibilities with their wide range of flow techniques. The brilliant, bold and bright colours are quick drying, acid free and can also be mixed to create your own colour combination. These inks are best used on a non-absorbent paper, hence the Yupo. Yupo's lovely. It's not really even paper, it's more kind of like a, like a plastic. They call it a paper but it's not paper as you know it, if you've never used it before. It's quite expensive. Um, I've got 10 sheets to play with here, which is nice. But like nothing else is quite like, you can buy a translucent one as well. And you can use alcohol inks and other kind of glossy papers. I've even tried them on photo paper and stuff, but Yupo is different from anything else. Yes, they can also be used on any smooth, non-absorbent surfaces such as glass, metal, ceramic or porcelain. The creative possibilities and applications are endless. The ink extender, perfectly complemented by this alcohol ink extender. The extender is an indispensable supply for many techniques and can be used to not only increase the alcohol ink's workable time, slowing the, work, the drying time, but also to lighten pigment, lift colour and increase the transparency of your inks. Experiment to create a number of stunning effects. What does it say about Yupo? It's a non-porous, acid-free and pH neutral synthetic paper. Yeah. Completely waterproof, stain resistant and is an intriguing alternative to traditional art papers. Okay, should we, should we try them out? Let's get into this. Um, so this is um, by Jess, Jess Kirkman has obviously been uh, using this, the two colours we've got in the in the set. That looks like another colour to me, just there. And this is more the same, isn't it? It's lovely where all the colours are mixing together and obviously the extender's been dropped in afterwards. And let's have a go. So here's the... Um, I mean, I can't... Ooh. That's come right off. Let's put... It's... Um, Two sheets or one? Yeah, it's two sheets. Sweet. <laughs> it's strange stuff. You can't tear it, this Yupo paper. It's very, very tough. I've got the feeling I read somewhere that it was invented as um, paper for like people hiking outside and things like that, military use and things. So you could use it, you could write in it like a notebook, but it, it wouldn't get spot in, in the rain. Yeah. So you can... Just curious now. Yeah, so you could just use it as a normal paper. Okay, let's have a little play with these now. Do I need to shine? Obviously, need to shake the. That's the diamond sparkle. Intriguing. I have, as I say, tried alcohol inks before, but I've not had a sparkly one. These don't need shaking, I don't think. Right. Okay. Let's just drop some on and see what happens. Mm. I thought that would come with a dropper, but oh, wait, hang on. Oh. Uh -huh. Now I wonder if I need to cut the top off that, or if it's yeah. I think I need to cut the top off. There we go. Okay, let's do the same with all of these then. They're actually really easy to pull off. Now I know what I'm doing. So they just pop off like that. If they're like other alcohol inks I've used in the past, you don't have to worry too much about immediately covering them. They don't kind of evaporate that quickly. I mean, it's only a tiny hole, isn't it? Okay, let's go for it. Let's just, um, shall I bring you in a little bit? Okay, I'm just going to drop it on and see what happens. Put a couple of drops around, so my, um, and then I'm going to drop this colour in next to it. And then let's try blowing through the straw. Ooh. I'm 
going to try some sparkle. <laughs> That's strange, this one does not want to come out. Oh, it's very sparkly. I'm going to try using the dropper instead of this one. Oh, now, can you see? Is it picking up that oh, sparkle? <laughs> oh, it's picking up on my hand. Look at that. Let's drop some of this in. Oh, that is so pretty. Look at look. Oh, I bet the camera won't do this justice. You <laughs> get in the right mess with this. I'm having fun now. Oops, if you just let it run. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some more colour back in. I have, I hasten to add, got the window open. What if I drop this back in the middle? Oh. Right, let's try the extender. So what happens if I put the extender on first and then drop the ink into it? It's just incredible. Wow. I don't know if... Um, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick up that kind of lovely iridescent sparkle that you get with it, but it is very, very pretty. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun to play with. I'm going to let this just, I'm going to just waft this around a bit, let it dry and then see what happens. I haven't even tried it with the brush yet, have I? I'm just going to use this little dish and I'm going to put a bit of the extender in there. I'm sniffing that, I probably shouldn't sniff that. I'm just trying to work out if it's just IPA or if it's, there's something else to it. It doesn't smell like IPA actually, it smells like there's something else. Well, I'm going to just see what happens if I would go back in while it's still a little bit wet. You can pull the colour out. And mix it together. I mean this isn't this isn't gonna be a pretty finished piece, this is just an experiment and to see what it will do. Oh look. Just I think it'll be one of those things where you've got to be a little bit patient and sit and let it let let it do its thing. A bit like with watercolours. You can't rush him, you need to just let it do it. That looks a bit like a backbone, doesn't it? These are going to be so much fun, aren't they? All oh, that tw <laughs> it's twinkling as it comes out because it's now picking up the sparkly one that I just dropped in before. So, what have we got? Any dry bits? Yes, this. Oh, that's not this bit. Is, no, it's not quite. I want a dry bit to play with now. That's dry. Okay. So let's see what happens if I use it if I use this on dry. Just gonna, I'm gonna mix just on my glass mat there. I'm, I'm gonna mix a bit of the blue and a bit of the magenta together with some of the extender. I'll just see what other colours we can get. Mm. 
And let's mix it without the extender because that's quite a muted colour. Now, one more thing I just thought, because it said about lifting, I guess anyway I've lifted the colour here, but, but I just wonder if I could do a more controlled lifting, like using a stamp. So this is the, yeah, make sure I got the wrong one, this is the extender. If I... I've got to be quick because it will evaporate, won't it? I'm just wondering if I can... successful that's been. Mm, let's try this. Right, so I've got a coat of the, <laughs> quite a wet coat of the uh, extender on there. Let's just stamps filthy. Yeah, maybe a cleaner stamp would have been a better idea, but I think it will do it. You can kind of see where it's the alcohol has lifted up some of that dry ink. I've sort of messed it up by using such a dirty stamp. But wow, what a lot of fun I'm going to have with these. Well, I'm going to call it a day there because I don't want this to be, be really long. Oh no! Tell a lie, let's have a quick flick through the magazine so you can see the kind of thing you get. Beautiful is that, isn't it? And so it, it tells you all about the um, the contents. You get a be better look at the contents. Some ideas about what you can do with them. A little article all about um, Jess Kirkman, the featured artist. It's always interesting to me. Look at some of these lovely effects she's got with this. Oh, look. Oh, I've got to try and see if I can do that. I love reading about the featured artist. And then there are lots of things to try. So I'll have a good look at that before I start on my challenge piece. Oh, to create a dot or drip pattern, use the wrong end of the paintbrush to dot the extent onto your artwork. Oh, wait a minute. Now we've got, we've got to try this, haven't we? So let's drop a bit of the extender in there. Use the wrong end of the paintbrush. Fun. The extender will help blend and move inks and can reactivate them once dried. Yeah, just like water into watercolour paint. Let the inks dry on the page and activate small sections with the extender for better control. Um, use a straw to create a wispy effect. If you want to mix the colours, it's best to use a palette or pot to mix the inks before adding to the page. It's a good tip. Tip the inks slowly to avoid ink spray when you're adding to the page and raise it back off the page. Right. Alcohol ink lids are notoriously difficult to remove. Try pressing the cap on its side with your thumb until it pops open and then remove. Oh, well, I've never found them difficult to remove. These seem to be fine. Surely, that wasn't an issue. <laughs> well, before you get started, it's worth noting that you should protect your work surface. Ink stains everything, including hands, so gloves are recommended. Well... <laughs> I never think of that until it's too late. Okay, no, notes from the artist. Let the inks guide you, not the other way around. A bit like what I was saying about like with watercolours, just wait, be patient, let them do their thing. Use more alcohol and extender on your piece when you're first starting out. 
that will allow the inks to blend together in special ways and you can add details as the piece dries, okay. I practice a lot to get familiar, that's what I need to do before I start the challenge piece. The magenta and Caribbean blue will create beautiful purple when blended. And here's the School of Gallery, I always love this as well. And I have enjoyed joining in with the community a bit more this month because I've, I've never sort of entered the challenge before and stuff. Um, so this will be from two months ago. And yeah, so the supplies in that box included the brand new Posca pencils. They were br they're brilliant, really good. Compare really well to Polychromos and Prismacolors. Um, they all mix quite well together as well. Yeah, so here was, I can't remember, what was the, oh yeah, Secret Garden was the challenge. And um, this is some of the things that people came up with. I struggled with it because there was no green in the, in the but I didn't really suppose to use what's in the box. But, you know, it makes me feel really um, unimaginative now because look at all this stuff people have come up with that fit the Secret Garden theme really, really well. Beautiful. I think, oh, look at that. Yeah, so I always enjoy having a look at that and having a look online as well now. Also about price changes. The June edition marked our 70th box since School of Box started back in 2015. A lot has changed, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the so subscription package price was increased as of July the 1st, and I didn't even notice. So it's not £15, but what is it? I'll have a look. And I'll put it in the description for you, because I don't know without going and checking my emails or something. Interesting little article there to do with the, the, the month's theme. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day there and um, do a quick edit on this and um, pop it up on YouTube. And then I'm going to have a little play with everything and then come back and have a go at the scholar challenge. So um, I will film that. I will put that in a separate film. So let's just put it, bring it all together. <laughs> let's put that there instead of, instead of mine. It looks much prettier. <laughs> That I think is, zoom out again. So that is everything in the July scholar box. I will be back really soon to show you how I got on with the with this month's challenge. Thanks very much for watching today. Hope you find that useful. See you again really soon. Bye.